The following program is brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries. Ever feel like you're not connected to God? You don't see or feel His power? In this day and age, we need to remain connected to God like never before. We must understand that it's our faith that connects us to God. God's power is always on and available. We position ourselves to God's power through faith in His love. Faith in God's love connects us to God's promises, God's possibilities, God's purpose, and God's purity. So why will God keep His promises? Because He loves you. issue with somebody you should always go back to okay where where was the breakdown because that's where we can that's where we can repair it that's where we can fix it in any relationship where was the breakdown in this marriage where was the breakdown in your conversation with your teenager where was the breakdown in your job situation and with a client or with a fellow worker or with your employer or employee where was the breakdown get to the root of the breakdown and then you're going to have a breakthrough and then you're going to break out in great success and victory. And that's, I believe, how it will work for us in our lives when we realize, okay, where, where is the breakdown? Because people ask me all the time, why, you know, what did I do wrong? And why isn't my faith working? And why aren't, why aren't I seeing more prayers answered? And, and listen, you know, when your faith, when you say, why isn't my faith working? It usually boils down to you're basing your faith working on you doing something else that qualifies your faith to work when really faith works by love. Faith doesn't work by works. Faith doesn't work by your perfection or your holiness. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says faith works through love and it doesn't work through our love. In other words, if I love people harder, if I love people more, will my faith work then? No, faith doesn't work through our love. Faith works through God's love. Faith works by love, meaning when I am convinced that God loves me, faith works. When I am convinced that God's on my side, faith works. When I am convinced that God is for me, not against me, man, faith works. When I wonder, does God still love me? Is God mad at me? Now my faith isn't working. Is God holding back from me? Now my faith isn't working. Is God letting this bad thing happen to me? Now my faith can't work because I'm not trusting in the love of God. And I'm disconnecting from my confidence in God's love. This is, the where, this is where the breakdown is. This is where most people's faith has broke down is that our confidence cannot be in our great ability to believe, our confidence needs to be in God's great ability to love. Amen. And when your confidence is in God's love for you, your faith soars. Let me show you what I mean in Genesis chapter 3. So... We see here that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat from every tree of the garden? Isn't it funny how the devil just boom pops into somebody's ear? And starts telling them lies. Like where did this come from? If you look at chapter 2 verse. The last verse of chapter 2 says. And they were both naked. The man and his wife. And they were not ashamed. That, that's awesome. That's good stuff right there. That's a great verse. Right? How many believe in. Two people both being naked. The man and his wife. And were not ashamed. I believe in that. Amen. It says notice it says the man and his wife. Not the man and his girlfriend. They should not be naked and ashamed. They should be naked and unashamed. 
They shouldn't be naked. <laughs> and they shouldn't be ashamed either, right? God doesn't want us to live in shame. He doesn't want us to live naked either, all right? <laughs> so here, there's this beautiful family and beautiful love going on and, you know, they're naked and they're not ashamed and man and his wife and this sounds awesome doesn't it and just when things seem like they're really really good all of a sudden Satan tries to create a disconnect now the serpent now the serpent now the serpent now the serpent listen when things are going good be on guard not because, oh, things are going good, so I bet something bad's bound to happen. I don't mean that kind of mentality. That's, that's, that's a broken way of thinking. When things are going good, something bad's bound to happen. But when things are going good, Satan wants to steal. He's got nothing to steal from you. When things aren't going good, what does he have to steal? If you don't have any money, then there's no thief is going to try to steal what you don't have. And Satan won't try to steal what you don't have. He only comes to steal what you do have. So you, can, so, so you can be encouraged that for those who feel like they don't have anything, well, don't worry, Satan ain't going to bother you. You're going to be, you know, just, just fine. Just. But why would you want to stay in that condition? Why not receive this love and this beautiful life that God wants you to have and be on guard because Satan is coming to steal, kill, and destroy? Now, we have authority over the devil, don't we? And the devil wants you to think that he has authority over you. Satan is so powerful. He wants you to think he's so powerful. And you know what? To me, it doesn't matter how powerful the devil is. I'm more powerful in Christ. One born-again believer is more powerful than all the demons in the world. Because every one of those demons have to bow to the name of Jesus. And every one of those demons have to flee when I resist the devil. When I submit to God and resist the devil, the, the devil has to flee. So if the devil has to flee, all his employees do too. Right? So everything's going good for Adam and Eve. And no wonder the Satan comes because he sees this connection that they have with each other and this connection that they have with God. And he doesn't like connection. He likes disconnection. He likes bad communication. He doesn't like good communication. He likes disruption. And it says, and, and, and this thought comes to, to Eve through the serpent whom Satan is talking through and says, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hath God really said that? And challenges the voice of God and challenges the word of God. And she was minding her own business. And that's just like the devil. You'll be minding your own business and bam, some thought from hell will hit you. How many have ever been minding your own business? And maybe you're, you're minding your own business and all of a sudden the devil says, drive your car off of that ledge. Have you ever been at a high building on a balcony at a hotel or an apartment building and you look down and, and you hear this all of a sudden out of nowhere the devil says well, wh wh why don't you just jump he said that to Jesus I've heard that voice many times it wasn't because I was depressed I hear other things when I'm depressed but that's not one of them <laughs> I hear that when I'm having a good time throw yourself down I dare you. Satan is such a, he play with your mind. That's why we need our minds renewed to the word of God. And our minds need to be on God's thoughts and whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, let your mind dwell on these things, right? Did God really say that? Comes to challenge the word of God. Hath God really said? And the woman said to the serpent, well, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not die. Now listen, here's where the disconnect takes place. First of all, that she's having this conversation with the devil. You should not be in a 
conversation with the devil, you should be in a declaration to the devil. In the name of Jesus, I resist you and rebuke you and command you to take your hands off of my mind, off of my body, off of my family, off of my finances. In the name of Jesus. You should be having declarations with the devil, not conversations with the devil. She's entering into a conversation. He says one thing, she says another, he says something else. And one thing leads to another. And he challenges the word of God. And this is where the disconnect is. Is that Satan is opposed to the word of God. Satan hates the word of God. He comes to steal the word of God. He doesn't want you believing the word of God. He doesn't want you thinking the word of God. He wants, a, he wants you to be biblically illiterate. And he wants you to, to doubt the Bible and doubt God's word and doubt God's promises. And he wants to challenge and come right against, he wants to come directly against what God said. You will not die. God said you will, but Satan says you will not die. God says you're healed by my stripes. Satan says, no, you're not healed. God says, I'll provide for you. Satan says, God's not going to provide for you. God says, I'm going to take care of your family. The devil says, your family is going to rot in hell. God says, I'm going to supply your every need. The devil says there's no way your needs are going to be met. God says that I'm going to open a door for you that no man can close. And the devil says people are going to shut the door in your face. The devil speaks completely contrary to the word of God. And we have to recognize that anything that we hear from life, from our thoughts, from the media, from friends, from family, from any source, from preachers, anything that is contrary to the word of God, we need to recognize it right away as the voice of Satan. No matter who it's coming through, their, their heart may be good, but their mind is screwed up when it comes to what God is saying. And I don't want to listen to anybody whose mind is screwed up and doesn't know what the Bible says, and doesn't want to live by the word of God. Are you with me? I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to open myself up to people that view life through their own opinion and their own way of, life, their own way of looking at things and their own way of thinking. I, want to, I, I only want to listen to people that are saying what God says. The serpent said, you shall not die. And... God, and then he begins to judge God's motive, to, or should I say, to misjudge God's motive. Notice, prior to this sentence, Satan was giving one sentence, one, one sentence statements to Eve. But now he's got her, and he begins to expound. And his sentences last longer. The serpent said, you shall not die. She should have said, shut up, devil, get behind me. How many know we need a, little, a few more shut up devils throughout our day? She should have been like, shut up, devil. But she listened, and he kept talking. And he said, for God knows that in the day you eat thereof, that your eyes will be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And now the woman has bought into his lie because she's not having any more discussion with him. She has fully embraced what he has to say. But notice the, the judgment that he brings upon, the misjudgment that he brings upon God's motive. For God knows that the day you eat, eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. In other words, God is holding something back from you and God doesn't want you to eat from this tree because he knows you're going to be like him. He knows you're going to know things that you don't know right now. You're going to be something that you're not right now. You're going to feel something that you don't feel right now. You're going to have something you don't have right now. Isn't that just like the enemy trying to tell us we don't have what God said we do have? Trying to tell us we're not what God said we are. He, we are already made in God's image in Genesis chapter 1. Where does Satan come off thinking that he, she, that he can convince Eve that she's not only not like God, but God doesn't want her to be like God, and God is keeping something from her? 
Now let me ask you something. If Eve believed the love that God had for her, would she have believed that God was holding out on her? Not at all. If Eve would have maintained her confidence in God's love. Now you see, here's where we can't be tricked by life because when it looks one way, we have to come back to the character of God. Or when it looks like, is the scripture saying this? Or it looks like this verse, I'm interpreting it to mean that maybe God did put this sickness on me or maybe God did let this happen in my life or maybe God didn't answer my prayer and maybe he is holding out on me or maybe he's trying to teach me a lesson and letting me fail and letting me suffer. And you can put an end to all of those misconceptions of God by simply knowing God is love. And love does, hey, love does no harm to its neighbor. Even when, when it comes to us loving one another, God says love does no harm to its neighbor. How much more, if God is love, he does no harm to his children. He brings no harm to his children. He brings no sickness. He brings no disease. He brings no pain to his children. We, we experience pain. We experience sickness. We might experience disease, but God didn't bring it. And if your faith is in God's love for you, then no matter what it looks like or feels like, you're going to, you're going to tap into God's power because your faith is purely connected to God's love for you. And your faith is confident in God's love for you. And therefore you know you're going to get through this. Amen. Not because you're so tough, but because God's love is so pure and perfect towards you. Amen. The disconnect with Eve's faith was that her confidence wavered in whether God still loved her. Her confidence wavered in whether God had the best, had her best interest in mind. I mean, think about it. We believe people when they're selling us something. I don't care if it's a toothbrush or it's a car or clothing. They want you to convinced that they have your best interest in mind. And you will buy what they're selling if they can convince you that they have your best interest in mind. The trick of a salesperson is to get somebody to think that they have their best interest in mind and they know better. And it's not a trick if they really do. But most of the time they have their interest in mind, not yours. And the people that last in sales and they last in business are the people who who truly emanate a concern for what's best for you, even if they don't make as much money from the sale. Because if somebody can demonstrate to me that they really have my best interest in mind, guess, guess where I'm shopping? I'm going back to them every time. Because I believe they have my best interest in mind. How much more does God have our best interest in mind? And therefore, I should always keep coming back to him. And see, it's love that draws me. It's his love that draws me back to him because I understand his love equals his character. His character is love. He will never stop loving me. He will never step out of his character. How many know, have you ever done something or you've known somebody for a while and then they do something really stupid and you're like, wow, that was really out of character of them? Or you did something and you're like, man, that was really out of character of me. God is never out of character. He never operates contrary to love. And he never operates contrary to his word, ever, period. God is not a man that he should lie. God loves me so much that he will not, he will not lie to me. 
He will not leave me. He will not bring up my past. He will not condemn me. He will not leave me hanging. He will not hold back from me. God's not holding back from anybody. We hold back because of our limited faith. And our faith is limited because we have stopped focusing our faith on God's love for us and we focus our faith on us mustering up enough ability to believe. And belief is not an ability. Belief is a simple trust in the character of the person that has made the promise. Ever feel like you're not connected to God? You don't see or feel His power? In this day and age, we need to remain connected to God like never before. We must understand that it's our faith that connects us to God. God's power is always on and available. We position ourselves to God's power through faith in His love. In today's offer, Pastor Gregory Dickow will send you today's audio message in its entirety, How to Connect Your Faith to God's Power. God never operates contrary to the character of His love. When we look at what Jesus did and what God has already done, our faith soars and produces a connection to the real source, God. For your love gift of $25, you will also receive Faith for Your Family 30-Day Devotional and a book, The Power to Change Anything. These powerful tools will engage you to God's undeniable power and remind you that faith works through love. And the greatest glory we can bring to God is to believe Him. And when you support this ministry by sowing your love gift, you enable others to experience a connection to God's love. You enable us to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and to continue to spread the Word of God to people around the world. Call now and get your copy of How to Connect Your Faith to God's Power audio message, Faith for Your Family 30-Day Devotional, and the Power to Change Anything book for your love gift today of only $25. Faith in God's love connects us to God's promises, God's possibilities, God's purpose, and God's purity. So why will God keep His promises? Because He loves you. Call now and get connected. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for today's broadcast, and I encourage you to call to get the resources that you've heard my announcer tell you about. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, God's people perish because of a lack of knowledge. It doesn't say a lack of money or a lack of friends or a lack of a college education, but a lack of knowledge. This is why I've put these resources together to give you the knowledge from God's Word to live the victorious life that God created you to live. So don't let that lack of knowledge rob you another day. Call or visit our website to get these resources today. And I also want to take a moment and say thank you for your support of this ministry. Every time you so a seed or sow a love gift into this ministry or get one of our resources, you're literally helping me reach people that without you would remain broken, hurt, or lost forever. You're helping to change the world one life at a time. In fact, watch this special and really amazing testimony, and I'll be right back to pray for you. My name is Theodora Williamson. My son was not feeling well on the, November 8th. We had taken him to the hospital and he was discharged with a virus. And about 25 minutes later, he calls me back and he says, Mom, Mom, help me. He said, I'm spitting up blood. So I, of course, go into the natural realm and I'm thinking, oh my God, I have to get out of here to my son. This is my only child. And the Holy Spirit tells me, ah, you cannot do what I can do. I have him, I have him calm down. I was at the hospital and when I walked in they were getting ready to take him to acute ICU. They had taken an x-ray of his lungs. They realized that he had pneumonia. They thought perhaps he was bleeding from the lungs. They didn't know. He was just, they, everything was just going haywire. And so I just started praying in the spirit at the door of his room and I just thought that he had a chance to live. And whatever it took I didn't care how long it took for him to be in this. I knew this was just a process, and I had to go beyond that. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit reminded me, telecast, Pastor Dick Howell comes out, and he's speaking. 
And he said, look to the door. And I was sitting where I'm sitting. And I looked to the left. I looked to the door of my son's room. And Pastor Dickow said, Jesus is wrapping his arms around your child. I went home. I was gone for six days. They had taken the tubes out of his throat. And that's when all the doctors and everybody were crying and said it was a miracle. And I never knew God could love like he showed me. Not only does he love me, he loves my son. And my son knows he's been given a second chance. He is improving. He's doing well each day. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you will give my viewer, my friend, hope right now that things can change, hope that they can turn around beginning today, hope that things can get better in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, remember, God loves you and so do I. Now, don't miss our next broadcast. I can't wait to see you then on The Power to Change Today. God bless. Faith in God's love connects us to God's promises, God's possibilities, God's purpose, and God's purity. So why will God keep His promises? Because He loves you. Call now and get connected. Introducing the NIV Live Complete Audio Bible Presentation. I say repent! It's a cinematic production. Go! The Lord will watch over us! Go now! 79 audio CDs, up to six complete mobile and digital downloads, the behind the scenes making of NIV Live DVD and the online web application scripture study version. This special offer for your love gift of $75. Get yours today. It's time to receive the power you need in life to win. Join Gregory Dickow for the power to change today. Connect to the power of God with each and every program as Pastor Dickow shares biblical insight and revelation to shift your thinking and change your world. Tap into the power, tap into the anointing, tap into the word on The Power to Change Today with Gregory Dickow, each week right here on this station. This program has been brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries.